along comes another October. With it, the usual smear of hopefulness and anxiety, ear flaps, ceremony, and that dude behind home plate in the Marlins visor. This October, we enter with our attention squarely on the Toronto Blue Jays, their first October since the early 90s. And on the Chicago Cubs, exhumed by Theo Epstein and Joe Madden, and the Pittsburgh Pirates, a rigorously good ball club. The New York Mets, who vanquished the preordained Washington Nationals, who, granted, helped a lot with the vanquishing. The Los Angeles Dodgers, the most expensive team baseball has ever seen. And the Kansas City Royals, who have gotten it right after three decades of getting it very, very wrong. And then, too, on what comes of the final days in the AL West, where there's two places for three teams, unless, of course, one of those teams becomes the Minnesota Twins, which could happen, too. So much is new, so much is sexy, it's easy to forget. What of the St. Louis Cardinals? They enter the postseason ranked number one in the final Yahoo Sports Power Rankings, which might get you a tankard of Bud Light up at Shannon's place. Otherwise, they are where they stood comfortably for much of the season, stacking wins upon wins, enduring injury upon injury, leading the NL Central back in October for the fifth time in five seasons and seeking their third trip to the World Series in that time. They'll lead with a pitching staff that, in spite of losing Adam Wainwright early and Carlos Martinez late, remains the best in the game. Oh, and Wainwright is back and will pitch out of the bullpen in the postseason. Last time he did that was in 2006. The Cardinals won the World Series. They may have to go out without Yachty or Molina, which is not insignificant, but the Cardinals do manage to find their ways. They'll put together at bats and make plays and probably figure it out the way they do. So there will be brighter stars, fresher faces, and grand introductions. There also will be the Cardinals. Don't forget about them.